joints of the knee or hip, okay? Um, in that, you know, as was pointed out, uh, people start off their journey with intermittent pain, which comes and goes, um, for which they may self-medicate with um, over-the-counter uh, analgesics. Um, and then when the symptoms become persistent, um, they will then, uh, if over-the-counter analgesics uh, are not suitable, uh, go uh, and seek out treatment. And this may involve uh, topical agents for the knee uh, or oral agents for the knee or hip. And largely this will involve non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs unless there are relative or absolute medical contraindications. It would not, I think, involve subcutaneous injection of an anti-NGF compound. Okay. Uh, where the anti-NGF compound would fall in the journey is later on in the journey. After a patient has not had um, adequate relief of their persistent chronic pain uh, or has not tolerated an NSAID, uh, maybe has not had adequate relief uh, or has not uh, tolerated intraarticular therapies, uh, doesn't want to use opioid analgesics, um, maybe is not a candidate yet for surgery, uh, or if they are a candidate for surgery, may have comorbidities which make the uh, surgeon reluctant uh, to proceed or the anesthesiologist reluctant to proceed, uh, or they may be unwilling to undergo surgery. So I think it's later on in the journey that we would think about using an anti-NGF compound. Uh, and if its amount of efficacy is similar to that of an NSAID, as was seen in this long-term safety study for the 2.5 milligram dose, that's still greater than what you see with placebo injection. 